But how we're going to start off is we're just going to take a little walk. I've got my dog and you can see he's hanging out here pretty close. Well, we have another little four month old dog. He's down from Ohio and uh, he's not used to having quite this much freedom. And so he's off in this corn somewhere and we got to try to get him back. Now, uh, our primary strategy is to come over here and like put the dogs in a situation where we know they're not going to go too far and we just take off walking as we increase that distance that kind of makes them feel a little urgent and they got to come find us now if you don't have this kind of space right and you don't have a mentor dog and you don't have anybody to help you go find your dog then put a long line on them for safety but we're just going to take off walking we'll blow the whistle a couple of times see if we can't round Bodie up and uh are made for, for we got two different sets of goals for this session we're going to do some actual retrieving drills with my dog and then the bowl the goal for Bodie is just to get him over here and get him used to being in this kind of environment now I don't know if a lot of you know about what happens when they harvest corn oh well there's Bodie he's a very nice dog I appreciate you coming and seeing me and so this is how the corn looks when it's ready to be harvested right and you see it's up here like this. And then here's your ears of corn. Move this out of the way. Eli. Show them what that looks like. So here's your ear of corn. And so the combine, it has a header attached to it, and it comes down through here and it cuts these stalks off, right? And as it cuts the stalks off, it leaves, you know, uh, about sometimes six or eight inches uh, of stalk up in the field and that's something that if a dog is not familiar with they'll come out here and they'll be a little careless and uh, they can really kind of jab themselves up with that so you really need to get out if you're going to be hunting in a dry field like this you really need to get out and do some environmental socialization so that the dog is you know used to these kind of things that uh, that they're liable to run into here because it's very uncomfortable now the other thing that they need to get used to is all of the different smells, okay? Because there's a lot of smells. I mean, obviously, you know, when uh, the corn is taken off these cobs, right? There's a lot of mechanical damage done to the grass, to the corn itself. So there's a million smells down here. But what else happens? <sighs> a lot of times, critters. Critters get run over by the combine. Critters get augered up and stuff. And so there's little bits of critters all in here also. So it's one of those situations where, like say we're gonna to try to work on some retrieving with my dog, he's already been over here a lot of times. So like, he's pretty used to most of these smells. Bodie, we might throw a dummy or two for Bodie today, but mainly what we're interested in, in is him just having a good time and learning to relax. You know, when we first let him off of the tr out of the truck, his nose just went to going crazy. He was into everything, running in and out of the corn rows, you know, and now he's starting to calm down. When you take a dog out for training, it's very important to time that training in such a way as, you know, you let them burn off that initial, like, uh, big burst of energy, but you don't let them get so tired that you're not going to get a good tra training session in. And that's why dog training is an art, not a science, because <laughs> you want to think in terms of X amount of minutes. But X amount is different, you know, uh, minutes is different for every dog and then for every condition. There's a lot of difference between 50 degrees and 60 degrees or 50 degrees and 40 degrees. Some dogs perform better in certain temperature ranges. Some dogs perform better at different times of the day. Like it's about one o'clock in the afternoon now. And uh, so, you know, my dog's kind of used to that time period for training because we have to do all our lessons at the kennel and we usually get kind of wrap those up at around lunch then we can go out and do fun stuff uh, ourselves other dogs you know maybe you've been training them before work or after work they're not used to that particular time of day that's something to take into account and really the only way to keep up with it is just to keep you a journal you know the better your journal is the better your dog training is now while I'm walking down through here, I'm going to start practicing with my whistles. I'm going to start off with my low whistle. Good. Bodie comes and checks in. I say I appreciate it. I might use my just my, my regular whistle with my mouth. Appreciate that. And then if the dogs get a little farther away, of course I'll use my bigger whistle right here. And then when they come back, something good will happen. Oh my gosh, good dog. Now we'll walk over here by this brush pile. Give Bodie just a little bit more of a chance to get some smells in, get some moving in. So 
a look at this big brush pile. You hear me talk about this all the time. Guys, a lot of interesting stuff happens in brush piles. Kind of come over here, kick around in this a little bit. Got to be real careful. Very nice. Oh, what are you doing, Bodie? Look at Bodie trying to get up here. Now, whether he can get up here or not, you know, I don't expect him to be able to get up here today. This is his first trip over here. So, just he made a little effort. I might try to call him once more. <laughs> little Bodie. And all I'm looking for here is I just want him to make some effort towards getting up here. And before you know it, they'll climb up here like mountain goats. Oh, you a good dog, Bodie. Come on. Do you want to come up here? Oh, come on. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. Here he comes. <laughs> oh, are you going to make it, Bodie? Are you going to put that extra effort in? Come on, buddy. You can do it. Look at that. Dang, very nice. He gets up here. Of course, I tell him I appreciate it. He falls down a little bit, but that's okay. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Get all the way up here. Dang, very nice. You are a smarty. Okay, so always when you're doing a, tra a training session, like in that training session, you have multiple little goals, right? And so this dog getting up here on this brush pile like that, that's a big win for me. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think he would come over here and get up here. He did. So uh, I'm going to kind of wrap this part of the session up because I always want to end on a high note. Uh, all right, so Eli, we're going to head back over here and do some actual drills. Dang, nice. Oh my gosh, and Bodie's a good dog. Yes, he is. Then we get out here and play with him a little bit. Uh, he surprised us on the wood pile. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to see if we can't get Bodie, oh my gosh, to do a little fetching. Nothing, nothing big, you know. Oh my gosh, what a good dog. Very nice. Oh, you're such a good dog. I appreciate it. Oh, you go towards Eli and get it. Good. Now watch, I'm going to kind of walk away. Oh my gosh, very nice. You're a good dog. You're a very good dog. Oh. Oh, you're a good dog. My gosh. Oh, now see this right here? You'll get this guy sometimes. They get it and they, you know, they decide they might want to go off a little bit. You know, don't stress, don't yell at them, don't fuss at them, just be patient. Once they figure out the only way to play this game is to bring the retrieving item back to you, then they'll bring it back to you. Oh my gosh. Very nice. Oh my gosh, very nice dog. Oh, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Now, see right here where, like I got, what's my magic number, Eli? Three to five, right? I got three retrieves right off the bat that were pretty decent, okay? And I probably should have stopped at three. I went for one more. He kind of gave me a little bit of a hard time, you know? So we need to end on a high note. Psst. So maybe I can tease him just enough. Oh my gosh, to get him to do it one more time. I throw this whistle on him. Oh, it's a good dog. That's a very good dog. Oh no. <laughs> Bodie, come on. You're making me look bad. Now he's going to run over there and uh, tease Mr. No Name with that dummy. <laughs> Maybe he'll come back at some point. Oh, good dog. Oh, and he finally came back and he came back with a pretty good attitude. Good boy. So now what's happened there, I was trying to give you guys a good look at uh, the fetching part of it. And then what he did was he, like, as he got close to Eli, he wanted to see what Eli was doing. And then No Name's back there behind Eli. So probably what I should do, have Eli move up this way just a bit. Okay, and then I will throw the dummy this way. That way, everything that the dog is interested in is behind me. So he has to go through me to get to what he's interested in. So it's me, Eli, uh, George, and no name. So I'm gonna throw it this way. Whistle for him a little bit. Oh, very nice. And this way I can kind of catch him <laughs> as he's going over there to tease no name with this dummy. We'll get one more. Oh, you can do it. Uh-oh. He says, look, I smelled some treats. I don't know if I want to go fetch that or not. Very nice. 
Very nice dog. Come on, come on. Oh, you're a good boy. And see how I did that? Like, see, you see, he did it twice in a row. He's planning on running past me and going over there to where No Name is, right? But Uncle Stoney's pretty quick. I can, I can snag him up if I need to. Now, I ended up doing that more times than I should, but I feel like I've positioned myself in such a way oh, <laughs> that I could get, <laughs> I could take advantage of him wanting to beat me at the game, okay? And what did I get? I got a nice line out to the retrieving item, and I got a nice line back. It just that line wasn't necessarily <laughs> pointed straight towards me, but I'm pretty quick, even at 50 years old. So he couldn't get past me. Look, I'm gonna do it one more time. See if I can snag it. Now right here, he might try to get all the way away from me. Come here, buddy. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Oh, gotcha. I gotcha. And you might say, well, Stoney, that doesn't seem very good. You know, what if, what if he starts turning that whole thing into a game? He's not going to because between now and the next time we come out here, I'm going to get 100 repetitions in the corner. I'm going to get 100 repetitions in the fetching pen. And remember what my overall goal for today with this dog was, was just to get him out here so he could smell around and walk around and experience this environment. He already met my expect, exceeded my expectations when he climbed up on the wood pile. So the fact that we got a little fetching in with him, well, that just makes it all the, all the better. So our first drill is very simple. I'm going to change directions. I'm going to ask Mr. No Name to get into the heel position. I'm going to throw the dummy and then I'm going to make him wait to be released. Now the weight is key here guys because the weight is what drives the expectation. Get around here dude. Very nice. So I'll get him in that position. I might tell him I appreciate it a little bit. Ask him to stay. And then I'm going to throw this dummy. I'm going to put a count on him. So in my head that counts at about a 10 right now. Then I'm going to release him. No, no. He's going to go out there and get that dummy. Now, one of the things that you'll see, guys, when you first start coming out here into a field like this, like when we're in the grass, like he doesn't lose the dummy very much. He goes straight to it. He doesn't sniff around as much. But when we're out here, there's so many competing smells and there's so much debris on the ground that it's easy for him to get confused. And it's easy for you to get mad at him, right? But don't get mad at him. You know, you go out there and put your face on the ground and you'll see there's a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, that'll distract you. Good boy, no name. So give him a minute. Let him, you know, let him hunt around, find it. Good. Ask him to come back here and get in a position. Hold it until you take it and then tell him you appreciate it. Good dog. Okay. Now we're going to do that drill one more time, but we're going to do it with a dummy launcher. I have my son, George, stationed up in the corn. He's going to fire the dummy launcher. My dog is going to have to maintain the heel position until released. And that maintenance of the position, all right, that waiting, is what's going to build drive for the activity. That's what helps us get a few high quality retrieves in rather than, you know, a whole bunch of low or moderate quality retrieves. So I'm going to ask him to stay. All right, Georgie. George is going to fire the dummy launcher, and there the dummy launcher goes. Release the dog, no name. Now, when you're doing this kind of thing, guys, listen, your dog, they come out here in a cornfield, there's stalbs everywhere, there's all kinds of stuff on the ground. It can be hard to find the retrieving item. You know, don't get upset and kind of resist the urge to think you need to help them. Let them go out there and work it out. They'll get good at it, they just need some practice. Very nice. And so here comes Mr. No Name. Uh, he's going to, I'd like for him to run a little straighter, but you know, he's doing okay. Now I'm going to get him to sweep around into this heel position and sit and wait patiently until I take his retrieving item. Then I'm going to tell him I appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> good boy. And uh, we're going to go do some other fun stuff. And that's kind of how we build these progressions, guys. Uh, now, there's a few steps in between throwing your dummy and using the dummy launcher, but we're just kind of giving you an idea today. And now, while we were doing this with Mr. No Name, we have Bodie over there uh, tethered so that he's getting, um, <laughs> and he's about reached the end of his patience, right? But he's getting exposed to this gunfire and uh, acclimated, you know, desensitized to it. So he's getting to see Mr. No Name over here having fun as he hears the gunfire. And what that does is that makes him hear the gunfire and think of good things. And that's all we need. We need him not to be afraid. All right, now we're just going to let this dog play in his pond for a minute. Good. Oh, might pick up a stick. Throw it out here for no name. Maybe that young dog will see him and think, hey, I'd like to run out in the pond too. You know, or maybe not. 
Either way, that's okay. Now see right here, you see, you see right here where he kind of got here and he started to head out in the pond? Well, it gets real silty right there. And his feet, you know, they kind of sunk down in the mud. And he's like, wait a minute, that's not water, that's something else. So again, when you're doing this kind of stuff, guys, don't get so frustrated because the dogs are expecting one thing to happen. And then oftentimes something else happens. Like as I'm walking out here, you know, there's some hard spots where I've got good traction and, and good support. And then as I get a little deeper, well, then sometimes it just goes to just complete silt. And that makes it hard. It makes it nerve wracking, you know. This little dog's coming out here doing a little better. Patience is really the key with all this stuff. And I know that having patience can be hard because, you know, you just time is hard to come by for regular people. You're at work and you only got a few hours a week to train. But I promise that if you will go slow in the beginning, if you'll go slow in the beginning, then you're going to make more progress in the long run. It's kind of like a tortoise and hare kind of thing. I see people sabotage themselves all the time because they feel like they've got to get it all done right now. Guys, the key is just to keep moving forward. Keep putting one foot in front of the other foot until you get where you're going. It doesn't do you any good to take a whole bunch of steps forward if in the same session you end up taking a whole bunch of steps backwards, you know. So just be calm and be patient. And like right here, I'd like for this dog to get just a little farther out here, you know. And I don't have a lot of time right now because... I've got somebody coming up from Alabama. We got to get back over to the house. And uh, so I don't know if I'm going to get him any farther than this or not. If I wouldn't have forgotten my waders, I could just walked out there with them. But, you know, since I did forget my waders, that's on me. And I just have to accept the fact that I'm not going to get as much swimming out of this dog as I wanted to. Even with no name out there, swimming around, doing a good job for me, being a great mentor. This guy just kind of keeps getting over here right up to about chest level and uh, saying that's enough. Now what I would normally do, especially in the summertime, is I would just take off tromping out there through that pond. And as I tromp through the pond, I just make this dog come with me. Now this is what will aggravate you about these long lines. It's about everything, you, every time you go out, your long line, ah. Uh, you're going to spend a decent amount of time, you know, trying to unhook that long line. But it's worth it, you know, because, like, watch. As long as I've got my long line on him, then I can keep him where I need him to be. So the long line's not only for safety, you know, like, it, we don't want the dog running towards the street or running towards the tractor or whatever. But it's also just for saying, look, you know, that sometimes there's things that you don't want to do. And you're going to have to do them anyway. Like he kind of wants to get out of the pond maybe. And I say, nope, you got to get back over here. Good. We're not going to make him do too much. And so we're just going to call that a wrap, you know. And was this a, was this a perfect session for me? Uh, no, it wasn't a perfect session for me. Because I, like I said, I forgot my waders. Now I've got water in my muck boots. And uh, I didn't get this dog to really do full, you know, full-fledged swimming. But it's still a pretty productive day. We got a little fetching, we got a little brush pile climbing, and he got wet. He got used to all this mud and muck over here by the pond, all the different smells, you know. I got a little long line work in on him where I can make him understand, like right there, he can't just go wherever he wants, and that's an important concept. So, you know, when you go out, you have multiple goals, and uh, you just, you know, try to reach those goals as best you can. Make sure you don't uh, get excited and, and overdo things. End up taking a bunch of steps backwards. Go home, write it in your journal, and do a little bit better tomorrow. And that's all you can do.